this new year, according to what God has put on my heart, is a year of new beginnings. A year of restoration and a year of multiplication. And I just want to encourage us by understanding types and shadows for those who may not know. A lot of times when we read the Old Testament scriptures and we take promises out of the Old Testament scriptures, some of them are types and shadows, some of them are literal. What do I mean? God came into covenant with Abraham and the Bible says the blessing of Abraham is ours in Galatians 3. But the Bible also lets us know that God had us in mind, even when he was going to covenant with Abraham, he said, out of you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So whatever promises came as a result of the covenant to Abraham, we are partakers of it. Then when it comes to types and shadows, maybe when God is saying some things to the Jews, and it looks like, wow, that is good. The Holy Ghost can bear witness to our hearts that that is for us. We can also study the word closely and see that that is also for us. Because God chose them as the first uh, nation to be in covenant with through Abraham. But God's covenant with Abraham was not limited to them. It was extended to every family on the earth. And that's why God raised the likes of Paul to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, those who are non-Jews. So I just wanted to say something to us about types and shadows before we get into what God has put on my heart. I am reminded of the birth of Jesus in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel said to her, that's to Mary, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who will to be born will be called the Son of God. And in verses 37 to 38 of Luke 1, for with God nothing is impossible. Then Mary said, behold the maid servant of the Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Why am I bringing this up? I realized that as a type and a shadow, when, the, when Mary said, you know, how can this be, knowing I know not a man, and, this, and the angel said, the spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you, I realized that if we are going to truly present the true Christ to the world today, we need the spirit to come upon us. Not because we're going to wait for him to come upon us before we tell somebody about Christ, but the true picture of Christ is not complete until we demonstrate something of his reality, and that is come by the Spirit of God. Remember Joel 2, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, your young men will prophesy, and all of that. And when the Spirit of God came upon them in the early church, they began to speak in other tongues. So I just want to say that Mary said, this cannot be. And the angel said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. So I just felt I should share with you that if you are going to truly present Christ, the Holy Ghost needs to be involved. And then Mary now said another thing that I love. She said, Behold your maidservant, let it be unto me according to your word. And that's been my attitude towards the word of God. Let it be unto me according to your word. And I want that to be your attitude. That any time you get an inspiration from the word, any time you get a witness in the word, any time you know that this promise of God is for you, you are the one to participate by saying, let it be unto me according to your word. So the scripture that God has laid on my heart starts with Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons will, shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be nursed by your side. Then you shall see and become radiant, and your heart shall swell with joy, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. Well, we all know that the COVID thing has created darkness on the earth today. We also know that amongst other things, there's a lot of activities going on that are not godly. But the Bible clearly says, arise, shine, your own light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you, and the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. This tells me that for God to be quickening this scripture means that 
we have not seen the end of one pandemic or the other yet. And who knows what 2022 has in store when it comes to these pandemics. But the Bible is saying that we should not cower under the pandemic. We should not begin to be intimidated by the presence of the pandemic, but rather we should arise and we should shine. Why? The glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Remember, that glory is already inside us as born-again believers, as new covenant saints. And the Bible says that glory is risen upon us. And with all the darkness and the, that will cover the earth and deep darkness the people, God will arise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. And people will come to the brightness of your light. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They will gather together. So this is not a year of observation. This is not a year of intimidation. This is a year of arising. Of a year of shining. A year of new beginnings. A year of restoration. And a year of multiplication. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 5 from verse 14. It says, therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead. So if any part of your life has been dead because of fear, any part of your life has been dead because of the intimidation and the, and the concerns you have, the Bible says you should arise, those who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of the Lord. I want you to know that this is what we should be doing today. Number one, we should arise. Number two, we should expect to shine in our obedience to God, in our faith, in our consciousness that this is a time to shine. This is a time to use the opportunities around us to draw people to the light of God's word. Because the Bible says very clearly, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. I want you to know that you should have peace when there is war. You should have joy when there's turmoil around. You should be rising when others are cowering under. You should be shining when darkness is around. That is the reality of the Christian faith. That is the reality of the new birth. And that's the reality that the demand of this reality is being placed upon us now by the activities of the enemy. The word of God has already told us that the enemy will intensify his activities at the end of time. And we are in those days right now. But the, the Word of God did not tell us to cower under. The Word of God did not tell us to submit to what the enemy is doing. The Word of God tells us to rise up and begin to shine. It's as if those who are rising are the ones that will shine. And those who are going to shine, they will shine because the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon them. So it's an activity between you and God. You arise and God's glory is risen upon you. But you must arise. How do you arise? Knowing that you have peace with God. How do you arise? Knowing that there's nothing that can affect you that God does not know about. How do you arise? Knowing that God's demands on you to obey him, to walk in faith, to walk in love, to demonstrate his power has not changed because Satan is doing anything on earth today. Knowing that if anything at all, it is because he's doing those things that today is the day that you should arise. So by the time somebody is sick and you are praying for them and they are getting healed, you are shining with the glory of God. Because the glory of God is made manifest through the miracle working power of God, amongst other things. In John 14, 27, it says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. So I'm telling you that this is what God has impressed on my heart. And I believe that his spirit is quickening it in your spirit. And you're having a witness in your heart that this is what's going to happen. So he says in Colossians 3.15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful. So don't be afraid, but rather be thankful. Don't be afraid, but rejoice. Don't be afraid, but arise. 
And that's what God's word is saying to us. As we read even further in Isaiah 60 from verse 9, it says, Surely the coastlands shall wait for me. The ships of Tashish shall come first to bring your sons from afar. They are silver and they are gold with them. To the name of the Lord your God, to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified you. The sons of the foreigners shall build up your walls. Their kings shall minister to you. For in my wrath I have struck you, but in my favor I have had mercy on you. Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles, their kings in procession. For the nation and the kingdom will not, that which will not serve you shall perish, and those nations shall be utterly ruined. Well, we're not going to say much about these ones because they're talking more specifically about the nation of Israel. But I want you to know that there is an application of these scriptures in our own lives. Because it says, the sons of foreigners will build your walls, the kings and their kings shall minister to you. It says, uh, men shall bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. So these are all things that will be done for you as long as you are ready to arise and you are ready to shine and God is going to use you to draw people to himself because you are shining. But the scripture that will also encourage you to see how much you can do is found in Isaiah 55. It says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, on verse 1, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. So why do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your wages for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear to me, incline your ear and come to me, and hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. This is where it applies to us again. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The covenant we have with Christ, with God through Jesus, is an everlasting one. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure message of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation that you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because, the Lord, because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundant, abundantly pardon. Let me just say a few things here. You will see that there is an, a strong call from the word of God to us today about the nations coming, the nations coming. God's plan is to... Raise, raise the church to disciple nations. And now he's saying that if we arise and shine, the nations will begin to come. The nations will be drawn to God. And we can release our faith, pray about it, and stand up and begin to make plans to see the nations come. But now, the part that relates to us directly starts from verse 8 of this Isaiah 55. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and board, that it may bring seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, for it shall accomplish what I place, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. I want you to know that with the assurance of faith, what God is saying to you shall prosper. Amen. 